Good evening, everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme, a.k.a. Massage Nerd, and today I have Dr. William Duresti. He's the Chief Executive Officer of Cranial Release Technique Incorporated, a national training institute that he founded in 2005. The institute is dedicated to the advancement of cranial release technique as a vital tool for the healthcare practitioners worldwide in promoting wellness and reducing stress in patients and clients. The Cranial Release Technique Incorporated Training Institute is accredited healthcare pr providers located in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, U.K., Australia, and Israel. He has also collaborated with numerous professional associations in the field of chiropractic and other alternative medicine associations. Dr. Duresti, a 1985 graduate of New York Chiropractic College, is a member of an International Chiropractic Pediatric Association and the New York Chiropractic Council. Welcome tonight. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you for having me, and thank you for uh, providing this forum so we can uh, discuss cranial release. Yep. And uh, thank you to all our guests that are joining us. Yep, thanks. So the first time I, I saw you was at the AMTA National Convention last year in Minneapolis, and I was just amazed by all the different kind of comments people are saying about how positive and how beneficial your technique is. And how did you come up with uh, cranial release technique? Well, in, uh, if we go back a little bit, in, in 1985, I graduated, as you just mentioned, from New York Chiropractic College and uh, practiced in Flushing, Queens, which is uh, one of the five boroughs that make up New York City. And I was in practice for about 13 years, so about 1998 it really became clear to me that I was missing something. And I, what I was missing, I didn't believe was in the spine, and that started to lead me to think towards cranial. I uh, looked into my own profession in chiropractic. We have many different cranial techniques, some that are very time-consuming, very, uh, very complicated, very sometimes even what you might call very invasive, and none of those really resonated with me. Uh, I did some training with an osteopath from the UK, that seemed to make some sense, but I didn't, I didn't get all my questions answered. I went back to the drawing board and, and really launched Cranial Release in uh, 2005. And the beauty of Cranial Release, it's, it's, a, it's a simple, powerful technique that changes physiology throughout the entire body. And uh, it literally, and I will we'll probably speak more about it, but it literally does take about a minute to do. So it's a very fast, very powerful Sort of like the, uh, you know, what dial-up internet used to be compared to high speed today. Okay. So it's, <laughs> and that, that's kind of a way you could explain it. It's really the express train to releasing restrictions, releasing physiological imbalances within the body all through the head. Yep. And are you currently based in um, New York now or Florida or... I am based in New York. I live in New York, although I probably shouldn't be living in Florida because I seem to be spending most of my time here. Uh, I'm in Fort, as I mentioned to you before the call, I'm in Fort Lauderdale right now, Florida. We are preparing for some seminars down here, and uh, I, I do most of my trainings in Florida and Arizona. Although I am in New York, and I, I was traveling all over, but I seem I seem to have found a, a good base of very interested practitioners here in Florida and in Arizona, and uh, things couldn't be better, and, and I'm very happy with the way things are just expanding here. And was chiropractic your first profession then? Chiropractic was my first true profession. I mean, I did many things, as probably most of us did, to get through school, and, you know, when we finished high school, we realized, kind of scratched my head, I really didn't know where I wanted to go. I was thinking, actually, of more dental thinking of engineering, and then when I was in undergraduate school, there was a gentleman sitting next to me that was, uh, I was 18 at the time, right out of high school, he was about 25, 26, and he had told me, and back in New York, even not that long ago, we used to have milk delivery men that would bring milk to the door of people's homes, and he had slipped on the ice and injured his back and had gone to the, the family doctor, and they had given him pain medication. That didn't really help. Uh, they gave him a stronger medication. They gave him injections. They were sending him to different specialists. And someone mentioned, why don't you try chiropractic? And, you know, no one really 
understood what was happening then he didn't he certainly didn't his family didn't he went to a chiropractor he happened to go to a, a very uh, what I would call philosophically based chiropractor that in addition to just sort of laid you down and did the, the chiropractic technique really explained what he was doing so that you had a very good understanding of the bigness of what chiropractic was all about and from that first adjustment he felt better in his back and not only did he feel better, but he knew that this was the profession that he had to follow. And he sort of uh, briefly described chiropractic to me, which was something that I really didn't know much about back when I was 18 years old. And I then went to a chiropractor, and I fell in love with it as soon as I got on the table. I said, this is for me. I, I can help people. I can use my hands. I'm not limited to working in the mouth. I like plenty of room to work, so to speak. So chiropractic made perfect sense to me. And... Um, I'm glad I made that decision. Yep, and, and then um, you're currently just working every now and then when you're back to your home base then as a chiropractor then, right? Right. When I'm back home, I still have uh, quite a few patients who deal with my schedule and my, my training schedule. Is, you know, my, my seminar schedule keeps me on the road quite a bit. So, you know, I'm home sometimes a few days every month, sometimes. And uh, so my patients know, you know, I'll see you next month, I'll see you this, that. But basically what I'm doing now, I went from what you, and, and I don't know, I'm not sure who's listening in, but I went basically from a, what you might call a straight osseous type chiropractic practice to a 100% cranial release practice. So the only thing I use in practice now is cranial release. And that might, that might surprise people because... <clears throat> Even the patient that would come in with a back issue, uh, a neck issue, uh, uh, a leg issue, an ankle issue, a hip problem, a skin problem, uh, a bladder problem, a, a menstrual issue, a, a, a basically whatever, fill in the blank, I have not found anything that is more effective than cranial release. And that's, that's what really drives me to go on the road and to get more and more practitioners out there because it wasn't long ago I was the only one doing it. And... Uh, now, a few years later, there's a, we have over 400 people all over the world that are doing cranial release. I get emails all the time, people going to my website, hey, I'm in Italy, do you have a practitioner? Unfortunately, I have to say no. Uh, I'm in South Africa, do, we have a, do you have a practitioner? Uh, no, I don't, not yet. And, and so, you know, I know that as time goes on and more and more people know about cranial release and as my organization builds, you know, the goal is to get people all over the world so that Anyone, wherever they are, should have, have easy access to a practitioner. And that's, that's really what drives me to do what I do. Okay. And then, why is it considered the one-minute technique? I'm sorry, why was it what? Um, why, why is it um, only technically a one-minute technique? Oh, then? right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I used to, um, when I was experimenting with this and kind of figuring it all out, so to speak, in my office... It was taking me two, three minutes, and I was getting great results. And then I was, I was checking patients, you know, when they first came in and when they left, and seeing my indicators clearing. And I started realizing that, uh, you know, what was taking me two or three minutes could really be cut back to about a minute. So, my, the, and for those of you, I mean, we're on the phone, so it's very hard for people to see what it is that I'm doing with cranial release, but. It's basically, uh, I'm, I'm contacting the head on the left side, I'm contacting the head on the right side, and in all, it takes me about a minute, and that's, that's even if I'm moving slow. I could actually move a little faster than a minute, so less than a minute. It gets all 22 cranial bones moving again, it gets them breathing again, it activates the primary respiratory mechanism, which is the involuntary cranial pump that, that's in all of us, and that needs to be amplified and needs to be maximized for us to function, for lack of a better word, at full power, so at full capacity. So that's, that's what the cranial release technique is. And that is, by the way, the goal of all cranial work is to get that, cranial, is to get that cranium breathing, get the primary respiratory mechanism moving again. And most techniques that I have been exposed to pretty much go sort of bone by bone, palpating the bone, determining if it's restricted in one movement or another, whereas cranial release 
sort of opens the entire 22 cranial bones, gets everything breathing again, and uh, and does it in about a minute. Okay. And then um, for, would you say this is more popular with chiropractors, physical therapists, or massage therapists? Well, again, that's, that's an interesting question because being a chiropractor and being that it takes a minute, that really fits into the chiropractic model because, as you may or may not know, I mean, depending what chiropractic technique the chiropractor is using, many times a minute or two is really all the chiropractor needs unless you're getting into some other special techniques that, that require more time. So when I first took this out on the road, my, my theory was that the chiropractors would be all over it because it's, it's, it takes all of a minute. It's global. It's changing everything. It's, it makes perfect sense. It's, it's enhancing nerve system function. And I started to go to chiropractic conventions. They were my, so to speak, my, my prime audience. And, uh, a lot of interest, a lot of people getting on my table, getting off. I mean, wonderful results happening. But yet, uh, for whatever reason, I found, and maybe it's the circles that I was traveling in, the chiropractors that I were dealing with were basically looking more towards nutrition, looking towards lasers, looking towards uh, special types of stretching machines, uh, special types of tables. And it seemed that there was, especially, well, especially here in Florida where I am, it seemed there was very few chiropractors that had that were doing a lot of hands-on work. It was kind of a lot of therapy, a lot of other things other than the, the quote-unquote chiropractic adjustment hands-on. Uh, I was kind of getting quite frustrated as the first year or two went by saying, I don't understand how my own profession is not gobbling this up because it makes perfect sense. And I remember that when my wife was in massage school, she took a few semesters of craniosacral therapy, which I have never studied, by the way. And uh, I remember her taking two semesters, and I remember the openness of massage therapy to cranial. And, and I wonder if maybe the chiropractors were just afraid of the word cranial, because as I mentioned before, in chiropractic, a lot of the cranial techniques are very time-consuming and very, very, very complicated, very complicated. So I, for, I forget how it happened and when it happened. It may have been one of the Florida State Massage Therapy Association chapters that I spoke to. And uh, all of a sudden, I just saw that they just, they were so blown away by what I was doing, especially because most massage therapists, as you know, spend, you know, up, upwards to an hour per session. And uh, although cranial release is not a massage, it's, it's a soft tissue technique, so it fits within the scope of practice of massage. They were seeing everything change that I was doing in one minute, and, you know, they were blown away by it. So right now I would say my, my biggest profession that is interested in cranial release would be the massage therapy profession. Okay. And I'm very happy to... I'm very happy to, to teach them because they're fabulous students and uh, and uh, and I'm just thrilled and they are too. So uh, it seems to be a very good relationship we're having. Yep. And then with with massage, can they can they actually prac um, use massage and then use this technique and then go back to massage with the same right. client good, then good, or? Good, yep. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Uh, cranial release fits right in with any technique that you're doing, whether it's Swedish. Uh, reflexology, uh, deep tissue, any type of neuromuscular, myofascial release. I actually would recommend, and I, and I tell my students when I train them, which is a, maybe we'll talk about that later, it takes yeah. me four days to train people. And I know I just said it's a one-minute technique, so some of your listeners might be saying, wait a minute, one-minute technique, why does it take three and a half days to, to teach them? Well, it's, it's so specific and it's got to be done just right, like watching maybe a professional golfer hit the ball and watch it go right down the middle of the, you know, uh, of the fairway, so to speak. When it's done right, magic happens. And if you do the cranial release first, the soft tissue in the body completely relaxes. The fascia completely becomes much more yielding to anything else you're going to do after that. So... Any 
anyone that's practicing any of those different modalities within massage, if you did the cranial release first, you would find it would be much easier on you during that one hour session. It would be much more enjoyable for your client and your results would absolutely go through the roof. So yes, cranial release fits in with any other modality or as some people are using now, as I've always used, it could be used as a standalone also. So you could just do the cranial release, spend a few minutes with the client, do some pre and post checks that I teach during my seminar to make sure that you cleared all the indicators, make sure your technique was right on the button, and then uh, you can finish there or you could go right into your other different technique and whichever way you want to go is fine by me. And it, it, the, the, the client really is the one that benefits, so that's, that's a wonderful thing. Okay. And then what are some of the skeptics say, said about this? Well, most of the skeptics uh, are the people that kind of watch and listen and say, well, it all sounds good, but, you know, how could really a one-minute technique do all these things that you're saying and then really the, the best part of when I do my sort of introductory seminars is is when I get everybody up on the table because usually if I'm in a, a, a classroom depending on the size I like to have it small enough you know maybe under 20 25 people so that at the end of like a, a little training class or a little introductory class I invite them all up to get on the table and experience it and and I can't tell you how many times, and, and we were just discussing YouTube before you and I, and I have nowhere near the collection of videos that you have, but uh, if people go to my website, you'll see just practitioners and patients just telling you all these different things that, you know, they've been troubled with sometimes for years. And many times, one cranial release will start the whole process, start the whole unraveling process. So... You know, I've been listening to the critics for years, and it doesn't really matter what people say. What matters is what I'm doing and what I know is right. So uh, I would I would uh, say to any of the critics, don't take my word for it. You can go on to my website. You can call any of the practitioners and ask them and see what they have to say. And get on the table and experience it for yourself before you, you know, make any comments. But uh, I, I know it's hard to believe. One minute, change this, change that kind of hard to believe until they get on the table and then I blow their mind, so. Yeah, because the problem is with the average massage therapist, I mean, we, we can um, get injuries over time, so that's right. why we need these different kind of techniques just to mm -hmm. just to break it up a little bit every now and then. Right, and, and on that note, that, that's a good point, too. To actually apply the cranial release is very gentle on you, the practitioner. So it's um, if it's done correctly, and back before I, and I was mentioning to you before the call started, I sold my practice in 2004. I moved to Miami Beach, and I was going into business with another doctor at that time. When I sold my practice, it was common for me to see 100 to 125 visits in a day oh. doing cranial release. Wow. So <laughs> that was three, four days a week, and that's without any injury to me. And and I don't expect anybody to do that, and I don't know that I would want to do that anymore if I went back into practice, but you could certainly see a lo very large number of, pa of patients and not injure yourself. Or if you're doing some of the other techniques and you added the cranial release technique, that would actually make your job easier and make your, make your longevity in the profession last longer because it would take some of the take some of the stress and strain out of what you're doing every day and make your job easier. And that's, that's a big one. As a matter of fact, I would say the majority of the massage therapists that come on board and actually take my training are people that have been in the profession 10, 15, 20, 20 plus years commenting things like, you know, my, my shoulders, my back, my elbows, my wrists, you know, at the end of the day, chiropractic, massage therapy, it's physical labor. It's lifting, it's bending, it's twisting. And if there's anything that we can do to make it easier on ourselves, we should investigate that. And cranial release will definitely make your job easier, whether in whatever technique that you do. If you did the cranial release first, the whole patient's body is completely relaxed, and it'll make your the next 59 minutes of whatever you're doing so much smoother that you'll be glad that you learned cranial release.
Yep. And have you heard of um, people that are cranial sacral therapists incorporate that into their cranial um, treatment too then? or? I have. I have quite a few that uh, do both. And again, I've never studied cranial sacral therapy other than reading a little bit about it. And I have a few, I'm thinking of a few of my students right now that do both. And they tell me that the cranial release enhances the cranial sacral. So again, it's something that uh, you could add on and whatever modality you're using, it would only benefit the client and the practitioner. So it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful relationship. Yep, and, and this day and age, I mean, so many people, it seems they're skeptic about uh, quick fix kind of things, but it seems right. like, I mean, I've talked to so many people that have had this treatment and they just loved it. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, it's, it, takes, it only takes a minute because it only takes a minute. It, it, it's not that I have to stay there and not if I held your head for five minutes, you'd get a better treatment than one minute. It's just that I can get the job done in one minute and that's all that I need to do. And... Uh, it's kind of the same analogy sometimes I used to use with patients. I would finish up with them and I would do, a, I would always do some sort of a pre-check to see an imbalance, apply the cranial release, and then do a post-check to see if we cleared things. And once they were cleared, they would say, but how could that be? You know, you only, you only did, it only took a minute or a couple seconds, isn't that? And I, and I always give the analogy, you know, you go to the gas tank to fill up your car and you fill it up and it's whatever, 30, 40, 50 dollars, depending on what car you're driving. And you know, it's it's fifty dollars for, you know, a minute or two to fill up the tank. And then the question is, well, gee, I spent fifty dollars. Do you stand there for another hour and just hold on to the gas tank, or do you just kinda take out the uh, take out the plunger and tighten up the cap and off you go? <laughs> so it's it's you know, it, it only takes a minute because that's all it takes me to you know, it's not me, it's all my students. It's nothing it's nothing special about me. It's just that is the technique which okay, it's very different from what most of the techniques that most massage therapists use, but it's different and it only takes a minute. So it's not that if I again it's not that if I held it for five minutes or ten minutes, you're gonna get benefit from it. Twenty, thirty seconds on each side of the head is all I need. And I clear all my indicators, so that's all I need to do, and I'm and, and I'm done for that visit. And again, maybe we'll speak about this a little bit later. But to me, I spend a lot of time in my seminar with my students on the harmful effects of stress and the stressful life that we all lead today. And remember, stress is physical, chemical, and emotional. So if the physical doesn't get you, and if the emotional doesn't get you, then the chemical will. There's, there's no escaping those three every single day. It's part of being alive. The problem is, is research was done and showed that when we're under constant chronic stress, the stress that we're all under in 2011, the constant chronic stress, low-level stress, they actually termed it, that the brain hemispheres become unbalanced. And one hemisphere becomes overactive. And when the hemispheres become overactive, of course, it's the brain that controls the musculoskeletal system. So one side of the musculoskeletal system will be tightened, will be over-contracted. And that then affects posture. That then affects the way you walk. That affects the way you hit a baseball. That affects the way you drive your car. That affects everything. So one of the reasons my patients keep coming back for cranial release over and over and over, even though it is a one-minute treatment, it's not a one-time treatment. It's something that's done on a regular basis ideally for the rest of your life, to optimize function. And that's that should be what massage is, chiropractic, any wellness lifestyle. You, you know, if you go on a diet and you start eating clean for a day or two or three, that's great. But if you go right back to the junk food, then really, you know, did you do anything? Well, probably not. It's the, it's the long-term commitment to a wellness lifestyle, which cranial release fits right in, that makes a difference, and, and in my experience, that's what a lot of people are looking for right now. And a lot of patients are very happy to come and see me for just a few minutes and uh, pay me a very handsome amount for what you might term a short visit because they feel they're getting value from it. So that's that's how I operate, and that's always worked out well for me and for my clients. Yeah, because that's the bottom line. If it's helping them, it's definitely worth it no matter what. So, You know, uh, yeah. to me, you know, People aren't stupid. So 
you and I go to a restaurant the first time, we don't like it, we'll try it again, we don't like it the second time, we didn't like the service, we didn't like the food, maybe it was too expensive, maybe we go back a third time, you know, three strikes, you're pretty much, you're out, you know, I'll go down the street and find some other place. So one of the nice things, I mean, since I've been doing cranial release since 1998, is, I mean, I have clients from back then that still come and see me. They would see me more often if I were home more often, but right now, pretty much every month, they're booked in, and, and uh, uh, the, the few that I'm thinking off the top of my head, I mean, I know people that travel an hour and a half. I tell this story all the time to, to my students. They travel an hour and a half by bus and subway to get to my office, to lay on my table for a minute or two, to go back home for an hour and a half, and they pay me $75 for that. And the only reason why they do that month after month, year after year, is that they feel that there's value to that. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it because people aren't stupid. Yeah. So, you know, they're getting something out of that. And, <clears throat> and to me, just like, you know, getting a good massage, whatever it is, $50, $75, $100, dollars whatever, you know, there's really no price you can put on feeling good and having a body that works right. Because at the end of the day, you know, when we see people that are sick and uh, whether they have, you know, wealthy people, oh, I'd give it all away if I could just be healthy again. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. You know, it's, it's a long-term cumulative effect. And cranial release fits right in perfectly, especially maybe I'm from New York City. People don't like to wait. We don't like to spend a lot of time. It's Everything is in and out, quick, quick. So they come in to see me for five minutes. They receive the cranial release. They go, and they just feel like the weight of the world was lifted off them. And um, uh, it, it's worked out very well for me and, and for my clients, as I keep mentioning. So. Yep. And has the, has the technique actually changed um, since its conception back in 1998 then? Uh, when I first... The, the answer is yes. The technique has been modified and, and refined from when I first started experimenting with it until where it is right now. So the one that I've been teaching now is the same one I've been teaching really since 2005. And as a matter of fact, this weekend I'm having a, a seminar that all my existing students are coming back to, to listen to some lectures. I have some guest speakers, some people within my group that are speaking, but the the second part of the seminar is going to be technique, and it's the same exact technique that I taught everybody back at the four-day seminar. It's just now that you're out there and you're doing it, and now you have more skill, now it's time to just fine-tune it and fine-tune it and fine-tune it. It's like anything else. It's like swinging a, a baseball bat. It's like throwing a curveball. It's like hitting a golf ball. It's just constant refinement, making it smoother, making it cleaner making it more effective so that what you're doing is even working deeper and deeper and deeper within the patient. And that's, that's the way it is. It's just, a, it's, I tell my students all the time, the cranial release I did today was better than the one I did yesterday. And the one I give you tomorrow in theory should be better than the one I gave you today because I'm still getting better at my skill level. Every day that goes by, I'm still looking at, at, am, I, am I using the right force? Am I using the right contact? Am I using the right vector of force? All these multiple facets that make the technique magical that have to be done just right. And, and again, I use the word magical only because it's all based on anatomy and physiology. It's nothing based on sort of a, you know, a, a, an airy-fairy type technique. It's based on anatomy and physiology. There is a very specific anatomical contact point. There's a very specific anatomical line of drive that's got to be done. And when everything works well, the cranium just opens and starts breathing, and uh, it's just a fabulous thing that happens. And, and it can be used on everywhere from newborns, and I mean right after delivery, up until I have students that are in the hospice that use it. So you really can be used from the beginning of life until the end of life to make the whole experience gentler, easier, uh, simpler, and just more enjoyable while we're here for this short time on this planet. Okay. And um, have you gotten involved into research or case studies yet with it? Well, that's, that's the next step. We're into, we're doing that now. We're, we're looking at 
you know, we start off with, you know, the one patient that comes in with X and then you do cranial release and then they improve. And that's the, that's the first sort of case study. So I, uh, I now have a researcher on the team because I'm not a writer and I'm not a researcher and I don't know how to write those things up. So I have someone now that knows how to do that that's going to be working with me on those issues because I know the next step for the scientific world to, to take me serious is they, they, need, they want to see these research papers. And we want to, you know, get to universities and start doing that. But everything, as you know, takes money and time, and that's what we're doing. And that's that's in the plot. That's that's happening as we speak. And uh, I get all I, I get uh, students of mine that call me all the time. Hey, doc, you know, I had a patient with this, and this is what happened. They improved. You know, I want to write it up. Okay, well, now I have a researcher on staff that can start doing the writing and then get us published, and then get the word out there. Okay. And and what is this about this one famous chiropractor that gave you a testimonial? Um, Which one? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, the, probably the most famous one that I know of is Dr. Versendal. Yep. And then uh, Dr. And, Wayne Dyer, too. Oh, Wayne Dyer. Well, yeah. Yep. Well, I, actually, it was... Um, and I don't think he minds that I tell the story because he was kind enough to get up and tell his own story. This is, uh, I was here in Fort Lauderdale probably about five years ago, and a very famous chiropractor by the name of Dr. Versendahl, who's very well known in my profession, uh, got injured in a supermarket in an accident and was actually scheduled for surgery, uh, for back surgery. Someone, someone was behind him with a shopping cart full of groceries and had a seizure and somehow ended up pushing the shopping cart directly into his back and knocked him down, took him to the hospital, uh, MRIs, CAT scan, herniated this, nothing can be done, you need surgery, and, you know, he was trying his best not to have it. One of my students that came to the seminar said, there's a very good friend of mine, Dr. Versendahl, of which I know the name, but I never met the man, and as God is my witness, he came in in a wheelchair and within four days he was walking and the pain was gone and, and I was seeing him three times a day with cranial release because he was scheduled for surgery. Wow. So that was, uh, that was some pretty intense treatment, but that's what he needed at that time. Wayne Dyer, who most people probably know, Dr. Wayne Dyer, was speaking at the Parker Chiropractic College this year, January 2011, in Las Vegas. And he was talking about active release technique, which is another wonderful technique. I've never studied it. I've had it done to me. I know it's very effective. I know a lot of athletes use it and swear by it. So he's having active release technique done in Hawaii where he lives. And one of my students happened to be in the audience and went up to him at the end of his talk and said, if you'll give me just a minute or two, I'd like to explain what cranial release technique is. I know you've been speaking about active release. And Dr. Wayne Dyer said, sure, I'm, I'm open to it. And my uh, student told him it's a one-minute technique that will completely melt your stress away. And they ended up going up to Wayne Dyer's suite in the hotel, and he worked on him, and Wayne Dyer just absolutely fell in love with it. He felt such a difference in his body. And then he had him come back the next day, which was Saturday. They did it again. Had him come back the next day, Sunday. Wayne Dyer went back to Hawaii, told his chiropractor, whose name is Dr. Rich Sargent, in Maui. He said, Rich, I had this thing called cranial release. I would strongly recommend you look into it. Next thing I know, Rich was scheduled to take the training in Phoenix. He's been doing it in Maui since April, working on Wayne Dyer every week. And uh, Rich is very happy with it. uses it in conjunction with active release as well. And Wayne Dyer is going all over, and obviously he's got a massive following. So he's been uh, sending a lot of people towards the cranial release website to take a look. And if you're, you know, if you're not a if you're not a practitioner to have the work done, if you are a practitioner, not only have the work done, but investigate the training because it, you'll just be able to help so many people in, in so many different ways. His his uh, YouTube his two minute little video. We put up that's on my homepage at craniorelease.com. So anyone listening could could go to my website and take a look at that. Yep, and I just put put that in the chat too for people. So oh great, Thank yep. You.
And then um, for the training, is there just that, uh, was it three and a half days, you said? Yep, you know, oh. unlike other different techniques and, and, and different systems, and, and I know that there's a reason why they need to do that, basically you come with me for three and a half days and we're done. You come one time. Then it's practice, practice, practice. It's the same old story. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> so you go home, you, you start practicing, you start refining your skills, you get better, better, better. Then the second part of the story, which is completely optional, is for patient, is for my students to come back and do what we call the mastery review, which is reviewing all aspects of the technique. That typically is one day, and again, that's optional. And uh, that is pretty much what people need. And then, you know, I, I recommend they come back once a year to get their technique kind of sharpened up a bit. But I've had people that have sat through my four-day class, three and a half days. I've had people that sat through it five times because every time they sit through it, they just understand it deeper. It becomes, uh, it just becomes clearer and clearer. I mean, just like when we go and watch a movie, and you go back the second time when you watch it, sometimes you say, gee, I, I didn't even see that part the first time because I was thinking about something else. And, you know, every time you watch it, it you, you understand deeper and deeper what the director and the producer were trying to achieve. And every time these that my students come back and go through it again and again, although that's completely optional, it, you really only need to come the one time. You're really ready to go. As a matter of fact, I always tell people, you have a money-back guarantee that when you leave on Sunday, you're able to do it. And I teach you the different variations of the, tech, of the technique, which is the adult version, which we do on most patients, which is supine on the table. There's a pediatric version or a, a, an infant version, which you could do to children that are you know, anywhere from newborn to, say, 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, depending on the size of their body. There's a seated version of the technique for people that are in a wheelchair or can't lay down for whatever reason. And then there's a, the final is the hospital bed or nursing home version. So, you know, you go visit grandma or grandpa in the nursing home. They're laying there. They have a headboard uh, on the bed. You can't move them out of the bed because they're, you know, they have tubes or tracheotomy or whatever it is, uh, trach tube. And there's a way to do the technique from the side of the table as well. So. Really, when you leave on Sunday afternoon, you understand the anatomy, the physiology, the philosophy of the technique, how to apply the technique, how to explain the technique. So you're really ready to go. I mean, Monday morning, you are ready to put cranial release into practice. Money back guarantee. Oh, cool. And then um, with that, is there, are you considered certified in it then, or...? Well, the, the word we tend to use, I mean, the word certification gets thrown around a lot. And, and from what I'm told from my attorneys, really the word certification, you've, we've all heard the term, you know, this person's a board-certified orthopedist or a board-certified plastic surgeon or a board-certified uh, endodontist or whatever it happens to be. So the word that I prefer is the word accredited. You're on my website. You, you've... You're on the website letting the public know you've been trained in, in cranial release and you're absolutely ready to go. What scares me, Ryan, is that when people are watching me, if I go to conventions or whatnot, and I know people are watching what I'm doing, and they're going to go home and try it without being trained. That is going to cause a problem because if your contact is not right and your vector is not right and you don't use the right amount of force, instead of unlesioning the cranium and opening and getting things to move and breathe, you will further lesion the problem. You will, you will compound the problem. And I've had a few of those calls where people will start off by calling me, Hi, Dr. Doresti, we met a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, whatever. I know you told me not to do it, but... And then they'll tell me that they did it. And I had one uh, person that called me and said, I did it to my wife. She can't open her mouth right now. Her jaw is locked. Uh, I did it to somebody else, and they have a migraine headache that won't stop. So... It, like anything else, you know, I, I, I respect everyone else's technique. I respect everyone else's work. I wouldn't watch Dr. Upledger do something and think that I could master it in just watching. I wouldn't watch John Barnes and think that I could do his work. I wouldn't watch any of the names that we all know in the different professions. 
So I, I would just strongly recommend to anybody out there, if it's right for you, take the training. If it's not right for you, then that's fine too. We can still be friends. And if you feel there's some value to the work, then just refer them to someone that's on my website, someone that we know actually went through the training and is qualified to perform the work. And is there um, some major con um, contraindications that people should be aware about that they maybe should not have the technique done? Well, the only, uh, as I, uh, and I cover this in my seminar, the only two true contraindications would be someone with a recently fractured cranium or a recent fracture of the cervical spine. Other than that, there are really no other contraindications. Unlike massage, and I know there are quite a few contraindications for massage, things like fever, things like cancers, things like infections, would not be contraindications with cranial release. As a matter of fact, many times you'll work on a patient, especially children who are, have a low-grade fever, and you'll put the head down, finishing the cranial release, and boom, the fever will go right up as the body is detoxifying itself, which is a good thing. So again, the only person that I would not apply cranial release to would be someone that had a recent fracture of any of the cranial bones or a recent fracture of the cervical spine, or any surgical intervention of the cranium and the cervical spine as well. Other than that, pretty much it's fair game. There's really very few people that would be contraindications, unless, of course, they were in some kind of an accident or trauma or just had some sort of a surgery, until it healed. And once it heals, then you would go in and apply the cranial release. There'd be no contraindication after things have healed and from what I'm told from some orthopedic friends of mine, you know, six months after a fracture of the cranium or the cervical spine. And I've done it to people post-fractures, post-surgeries, plates in the head, shunts, uh, fused cervical spine, wires, you know, all sorts of hardware. I've done it to all of them. And, and if you do it correctly, never had an issue, never had a problem. Okay. And then um, for indications, um, most things then? For indications is virtually anything. Yeah. Anything from, you know, aches and pains, digestive, endocrine, skin, uh, to just the person who, hey, I feel great, I work out, I take good care of myself, but I just want to maximize function in my body, which really, remember at the end of the day, since I don't know if anybody on this call has the letters MD after the name, like medical doctor, then really none of us are treating symptoms and treating disease. So what I prefer to do is to enhance overall function, help the body to come back to balance, help the body to come back to homeostasis. And that's what cranial release does. And that, that is the key, restoring function so that the body can do and repair and heal and, and do what it needs to do on its own from the inside out, and that's that's what cranial that's the platform of which cranial release is based on. Okay, and then what would you say um, your key to your success in your business? Uh, the key to my success is 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 my willing and and willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done, and whether that means get on a call at ten o'clock at night. <laughs> You know, I, I was thinking about this when I was getting ready for this call tonight, saying to myself, I can remember being a chiropractor in practice in Flushing, Queens, and going to nursing homes, and in nursing homes, there were three eight-hour shifts, obviously, and going to lecture to the, to, the, to the staff now, not to the patients, to the staff, the nurses, the nursing, the nurses' aides, the, the uh, licensed practical nurses, all the people there that are working, you know, the 24-hour shifts and, or the, the, you know, the three shifts. And I can remember going, you know, to do a lecture at 10 o'clock at night. I can remember doing lectures at 3 o'clock in the morning just to go so that all these people could hear what I had to say. And um, the desire to help people, which is probably the reason why we all got into these different professions that are on this call tonight, the desire to help is what fuels me, and I have just found that there's nothing else that I could do to a patient 
that's more effective than cranial release. And that's why, rather than be the only person in the world that knows how to do this, having a big practice in New York, doing very well, I would rather have practitioners all over the planet that know how to do it so that we just continue to grow and continue to help other people so that when it's time for me to say goodbye to this planet, there'll be thousands of other practitioners that know the work and that can just carry on with or without me to, for the benefit of everybody else. And that's really what drives me and that's why I do what I do. Yep, definitely. And, and then with uh, cranial release technique, um, what do you see in the future with it? Well, what I see in the future is, like we, we some of the things we touched on, you know, more research, uh, more practitioners all over the planet. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of my practitioners just today was, uh, she, she just emailed me yesterday to say that she's been working on a patient undergoing chemotherapy. And this patient just feels so much better since she's having cranial release that for whatever reason, this patient emailed the local news station in Phoenix and was surprised that within an hour got an email back from the anchor of the news show. And my student was being interviewed today in Phoenix Live discussing cranial release. And that's happening all over now as people are searching for answers, you know, to me, it all goes back to the, to the basic fundamental concept that we were born to be healthy. You know, we have all these parts in our body. We have this wisdom in our body that knows how to digest food, to combat disease, to, to do all these wonderful things, but yet there's some interference in the system. And that interference is in the main computer-type system, since I'm speaking to you especially, that knows things about computers, that's the nervous system. So anything that's going to enhance nerve system function is going to enhance overall function of the, of the organism. And uh, the more, uh, as time goes on and more research is done, I think we're going to find out more and more about how cranial release works. I have a theory of how it works, but at some point somebody in a science lab is going to tell me, well, this is the real reason why it works. And here's what it does to the body, and here's why people respond. And, and so the future is looking very bright for cranial release, and I'm just ex expecting a lot more expansion in all different ways, in all different areas. And do you see um, your workshops being taught in other languages then? I do, yes. sure. I mean, right now, obviously, things are in English, and I, I think I mentioned to you my wife is from Peru. So we're putting together a program in Spanish for at some point that we need to launched that in Spanish-speaking countries. I had a gentleman that called me. He's a massage therapist in Phoenix. He called me. He said he got on the table. One of my students worked on him, and he said, that one cranial release changed my life, and I need to teach this in my, in my home, which is Poland. So he wants to bring it back to Poland. I have people that want to bring it back to Germany. I have people that want to bring it to Italy. I have a gentleman here this weekend who's in Spain who came back for the seminar this weekend. He wants to bring it to Spain and back to his home in Africa. So people just want, you know, when something's good, they want to, they, they want to share it and they want to bring it back to the people that they know and love. And that's why I see cranial release going all over the world. Not because I'm pushing it in all different directions, but because the natural, the natural flow, the natural law is when something's good, it gets spread around. And that's what's happening with cranial release. Yes, definitely. And, and then, um, do you foresee, I mean, more massage therapists getting into it too then in the future, or do you see other professions? Well, I've, uh, it seems to be the massage therapists are the, the people, the profession right now that seems most interested in it. Uh, but I can see a lot of other, I, I still see the chiropractors that, you know, they come in every now and then, but uh, I think that's, I think as more and more chiropractors kind of get back to basics, they're going to be looking more towards cranial release. Uh, I haven't had any, I've had some massage therapists that are also physical therapists, but I haven't had too many physical therapists come in yet, but I think there's, a, there's quite a group out there that if they knew about cranial release, they'd be very interested, and that's the same with occupational therapists, with uh, all the... Uh, we didn't even discuss about children and autism and all the things going on out there, which cranial release would play a role in all those things, whether it's children, 
whether it's athletes, whether it's people sitting behind a computer all day, whether it's the elderly, you know, from the, the entire scope of human life is enhanced with cranial release. So whatever practitioners, as long as you're licensed to touch a patient, I'm willing to train you. Okay. And the, yeah, I wanted to bring that up too about regulation. So um, would you consider this under massage in a way for regulation or what would you consider it under? Well, it's really, and when you get right down to it, it's, it's, I see it really almost as a profession unto itself, believe it or not. Uh, it certainly falls under the scope of massage therapy because it's working with soft tissue. It's not, it's not chiropractic in the sense we're not, you know, adjusting the spine, we're not manipulating bones, anything like that. So it's it certainly, I mean, if you're allowed to touch a patient and do any type of soft tissue work with a patient, then you're allowed to do cranial release. So as a matter of fact, I had a podiatrist that was very interested because he saw changes in gait, he saw changes in the arches, he saw changes in ankles when his clients were having cranial release, but he said, unfortunately, my license only lets me work from the knee down. So he couldn't learn. Wow. So, but that's, you know, that's his own, that's, and every state is different and every profession is different. But to me, if your license allows you to touch a patient and allows you to work on the soft tissue, and you're not limited like a podiatrist, for example, which is from the knee down, then you're qualified to, to learn cranial release. I would not train uh, what, what we might call a layperson, you know, someone that's a plumber, someone that's an electrician, someone that's a, you know, a, a mechanic. You know, they would need the anatomy, the physiology. This is not for just anybody off the street. It's for a, a practitioner, whether it's massage therapist, chiropractor, MD, dentist, uh, occupational therapist, you know, anything anything along that line is fair game. Okay. And then what about, um, where do you mostly hold your workshops then? Most of my workshops right now are being held, the one that I'm teaching are in Florida and Arizona. My schedule's up on my website, craniorelease.com. I also have instructors that will be teaching in Texas and Arkansas. I also have another instructor that will be teaching in Colorado and New Mexico. And I also have another instructor that will be teaching in the New England area. So that's for right now. I have other people that are interested in different parts of the country. But what I'm doing is I realize I can't be everywhere. So uh, the once people go through my basic understanding, the basic mastery class, then they go practice. Then they come back with me. If they're interested in then teaching in their area, we, we design a separate contract where they have exclusive rights to teach there. They're taught by me so that the same seminar that you would get in the state of Maine would be the same one that I'm teaching here in Fort Lauderdale, which would be the same one in Dallas, which would be the same one in Denver, Colorado, let's say. Okay. So it's the same. It's the same. It's, it's kind of a bad analogy, but in theory... If you went to McDonald's in New York or went to McDonald's in Arizona or McDonald's in California, a Big Mac is a Big Mac. Okay. <laughs> so it's kind of the same analogy that the same protocols that I use, the same PowerPoints, the same technique, the same way I teach, the same protocols, everything's exactly the same. And they have to follow my protocols, otherwise I pull the territory from them and they're out. That's it. Okay, cool. And what's the best way for people to learn more about um, cranial release technique then? Well, the simple thing is to go to my website, which is craniorelease.com. One word, craniorelease.com. And there's plenty of information there. There's plenty of videos. There's uh, different articles. And if, if you still have questions after all that, you certainly feel free to call me or email me. My number's up there. My email's up there. It's You can send me a contact. Contact us. Just hit that button and... Those emails come to me, and I'm the guy that responds. And when you ring, when you call that number, I'm the guy that picks up. So I'm happy to discuss any situation, any question with anybody on the line tonight. I'm happy to do that. Okay, great. Well, is there any other things that we haven't covered, you think, that people need to know about cranial release? Well, there's a lot of things we haven't covered, but I, I know you want me to keep going until 4 in the morning. <laughs> for what we covered
of it in an hour. I think we gave a pretty good uh, a pretty good cover up of everything having to do with cranial release. Of course, there's some some different areas we could go into, but I think we've pretty much covered the bases. And if anybody has any specific questions, you know, that we didn't cover, feel please feel free to email me or call me. Uh, I'm a, I'm in the East Coast. I'll be in the East Coast for the next two weeks. So, and then I'm doing a a pretty big seminar this weekend. So if I don't get back to you in the next, you know, 24, 48 hours, just bear with me until early next week when uh, the seminar calms down because I, I have a full house this weekend and my, my energies are focused on making sure that this is done just right. So so that's that's where we are right now. But I, I want to thank everybody that's on the line tonight and I want to thank Ryan for putting it all together. So thank you, Ryan. Yes, thank you very much. And thanks for everybody that tuned in tonight, and I'll have the replay up tomorrow, so if anybody tuned in late, um, I'll have that up tomorrow then, okay? Thank you very Great. much, and Doctor. If you want to listen to that tomorrow, Ryan, yeah. what, what do we do? We go to your website, and there's a, there'll be a link up there? Yep, and I'll put it up on my YouTube channel, so it'll be up on there then. Okay, great. Yep. Beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thanks, man. Okay, good night, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.